I'm Doretha Hill Truesdale, and I am a Hollywood artist. My name is Curtis Arnett, and I am one of the original Florida Highwaymen. My name is Candy Carol Ingram, a painter for my late great creative mother, Mary Ann Carol. Started painting with my husband Alfred Hare, who is the founder of the High Women in the sixties. We uh, built our house in sixty-five, and we extended our patio out to the end of the house, and we could paint about twenty to twenty-five paintings per day. And uh, in nineteen seventy, he was killed. But by that time, we had painted um, close to fifty thousand paintings and uh, we had four sales people selling for us when he was killed and uh, now I'm painting on my own without him of course but I have his work and I have uh, collections of all of the highway yeah. work that uh, I sell and I go to different venues uh, promoting the highway promoting the legacy of the highway promoting my art and just a love of the art and I love that the yeah. people love our So tell us a little bit more about Alfred, like um, and his inspirations to start the Highwaymen. Like, what was the, what was that time period like? Well, first, he was he wasn't even the Highwayman. Alfred was just trying to find a way to sell his paintings, and he just went out on the road selling. And then he was selling so many. He said, well, thinking I can sell more paintings if I get somebody to sell them for me and I pay for it. And so he hired a salesman and if you work for us you got a car. So a lot of people would work for you to have a car so you didn't have any problems finding salespeople at all because of the fact that you did have a vehicle and a lot of people were walking so they sold a lot. So. Okay. Could you talk a little bit about your painting? Yes, for us? absolutely. I'd love to hear some so, you know, I said I painted with Alfred, mm -hmm. but uh, after his death, I have to paint on my own, so I painted on my own. And uh, and this has been now since he was killed in the 70s, so now I, uh, I, after he was killed, I had to start teaching because I had to make a living, so I put my art down. And then uh, in 1980, I remarried, I moved to New Jersey, started a new career, um, a manager for Federal Express. And so after I retired, we moved back into the house, and it was like, ever said, why aren't you painting? So I started painting. It just came right back to me, and I started painting. I've been painting ever since, which I love. It brings me peace and joy. And to see people enjoy the art is the biggest uh, feeling that you can get. Right. That when somebody yeah. says to you, I love your work, that's great. That's the greatest feeling that you can have in the world. That's why I do it. Just for that. And these are some of the paintings that I've done, um, and well, I'll explain them to you. Right. Is that okay? Yeah, for sure. But this is a cypress scene, and it's of the uh, Peace River. So, uh, this right here is a sunset, and this is also a portion of the Peace River. These two are a collection out of the uh, Fish Eating Creek. And I've been painting for over 50 years. And I started uh, 
back in the big Wow, she'll be looking at the camera. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. No, please, you know, as long as you feel comfortable, that's the most important thing. So, I'm sorry, not the 50s. I started in the 60s. In the 60s. Okay, mm -hmm. so in the 1960s, what was it like? What, um, like, kind of give a, um, a bit of a synopsis of what it's like in the 1960s. Well, for me, um, when I first saw my, my first painting in 1966, um, and see if some of the other highway women, the older high women, had already blazed the trails. So it wasn't that rough or bad for me. And uh, in fact, I was still in school. And after school, I would go and sell these papers. So when it came down to the school, were you more, was that something that you were looking forward to like every day? Were you more so, or were you just kind of like really to hone into school? Or did you just care more about the paintings at the time? No, I, I, uh, I was honing in on school, but also the paintings at the same time. Uh, and uh, like I said, I painted just about every day. And after school, I would go out and sell paintings. And on holidays, I, I would go and sell paintings until I graduated out of high school. So what motivated you to start painting? I always painted. Uh, I st I, at the age of about six years old or six or seven years old, I was drawing, used to draw. And then uh, I got a watercolor set. And then I started painting watercolors. And then I graduated to oils. And then I started painting oils. And now this work that you see now is acrylic. And then I graduated to acrylic when I started painting acrylics. And I prefer acrylics over oil because you can, to me, you can do so much more with the acrylic because it dries fast. And then what I do is I paint in layers and washes. And it's hard to do that with oil because oil is such a slow drying process with it. And like I said, I sold my first painting in 1966. And this is. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I'm 71 now, and I'm still selling paintings. That's amazing. <laughs> so even to this day, you're still selling paintings. You're still painting as well. Yes. So how do you keep your motivation after all these years? Like, what keeps you, what gets you out of bed in the morning that says, I want to paint? Well, to tell you the truth, what gets me out of bed is my animals. I live on a farm. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I bought a farm. I live on a farm. So I have to get up. But I paint a couple of hours a day. And then when I don't paint, I go into my studio and I, and I just sit there and I study things. And then, I, and that's pretty much, you know, how, how that works. Okay. So, like, how often, like, because I mentioned, you were speaking to one of the gentlemen that was a part of the Highland Man. He said he painted about 30 to 40 paintings a day. In that time period, like in the 1960s, how many paintings would you turn out? Oh, no, I, I never painted 30 a day. The most I would paint back in the 60s was maybe five a day. Five? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then that, that was like a good, like, you know, in the period for you, like a good you know, right. start for you, five. Okay. Right. Uh, what do you want people to know about the highway men through these paintings? Oh, um, the legacy that we want to leave, that I want to leave, is I just want to be the best that I could be with this. And then I want my paintings to live on long after I'm gone. Uh, and that's and and for the younger generation, I hope that they could see the beauty in these paintings as we saw it. Uh, and now the door is wide open for them. All they got to do is do the paintings, and because the the, the, the road has already been laid for them, they just follow in our footsteps. And I hope that they do that. a little bit about your mother like what was she like when you were growing up really what she like when I was growing up she was tough <laughs> she was tough but everything she did made a purpose for us to understand why she was the way she was mm. you know grooming us to do better and be better um, we raised up in a church went to church had to go to church she was a pastor 
But growing up with her was also we had our fun times, you know, as a mother being a mother. But we really had a lot of good times as well. She took us a lot of places so we could be, work, you know, understanding the nature, what's going on in the world, actually. Forget what I just said there. What's going on in the world. <laughs> you know, and pretty much that's how we lived our life. Church, her work, school. Uh, um, I suppose that's typical in, you know what I'm saying, the black American household where the mother is always very tough but she's also very fair. So what's one lesson to this day that you still keep from her that you will never forget? To always give thanks for all things. That's what it always is to me. Give thanks for all things. If you can help anyone, help them along the way. Because of the blessing that you give them, God have a greater blessings for you. It's a beautiful thing. So tell us a little bit about these paintings. Like, what do you like? What kind of artistic expression like do you think that your mother had with these? Everything she done, um, the expression was to show people the beauty of the world and vivid bright colors. You know, anything that may appeal to people like black. She seen no black and white. Everything was all beautiful colors, and that's how she made her life. That's the way she raised us. All different colors. So we see no black and white situation. You know what I mean? That's how she raises. And the paintings shows her love of nature, and she captured it all so well. And so that's about what I know. So your mother was the only woman highwayman. Um, so was there ever like an issue like with her being the only woman that's a part of that uh, male-dominated group at all or no? You know, we never. I never heard of one. Never heard of one. All I know that she was a trailblazer. She had to do it. She, you know, whatever man could do, she did it. That was she done. She had to raise seven children. So she she jumped for the top of it. She did all. She like to say. Um, she done everything. What's yeah. one thing that you would want your mother's legacy to be? Like, how do you would how would you like her to be remembered? By her love, her gifts, her love, you know, her love of Christ and giving to humanity, helping out. That was her legacy to live on. That's what I'm trying to do. Try to keep her memory alive. She was about helping, blessing, mentoring, blessing. You know, that's just what she was. Yeah.